What's up everybody, Billy Strange here with Inside Sim Racing, bringing you another test drive in R Factor 2. More specifically, the Enduracers Endurance Series mod. I'm going to be driving the Zytec 07 SP2 car, also on the Paul Ricard uh, prototype circuit. Both of these are fairly recent uh, Steam Workshop releases. As you can see, practice is going to start at 9 a.m. I'm just going to take a lap to kind of show off the pits and show off the track itself at 9 o'clock in the morning. Then we're going to jump to qualifying at 4.30 and then the race at 7.30, which will give us a dusk tonight transition because the race is going to be half an hour long. I'll cut out any parts that aren't very interesting, but uh, for nerdiness sake, I actually went through and looked at what... The weather was like for today and scripted it all right and as we leave the pits uh, you'll see the FPS counter up in the top right hand corner my pedal and then force feedback up in the left hand corner let's just take a lap here in practice nine o'clock in the morning around the Paul Ricard circuit Again, you're not doing the very, the more tight uh, chicane right there. So it really is flat out. And tires are a little cold, so we'll not push it going into this turn. There is another version of the Paul Ricard circuit on the Steam Workshop, but this is decidedly a much better version, although, you know, how realistic this is, I'm not quite sure. For the most part, it's a pretty good mod for a track. Uh, I enjoy running on it. There's some little details that I noticed from the other mod that aren't in this, but not a big deal. I think the only small little problems that I have is right around here. Right in that section there, there's a couple spots where the transition and elevation change seems to be a little abrupt, but again, I'm not an expert on the circuit, so that may just be exactly how it is. I don't know but not a big deal either way. Long corner with a late apex right here. Don't get on the throttle too much because you can definitely spin the tire. Went through this left-hander. And I picked the Zytec because it was the car that I was most uh, connected with. Uh, I also really liked the Orica. I thought that was a good car. The Gibson was pretty good as well. A little overshoot there. And that is a lap at 9 o'clock in the morning around the Paul Ricard circuit. Alright, so that wasn't a good lap for qualifying. We're going to try lap 2 here, see if we can do any better. Now, if you notice, not a lot of head movement. Uh, except for these big dips, I don't particularly care for a lot of head movement. Your eyes don't typically do that while you're racing in real life. So I... Wow, that... Almost scared me. That P2 car uh, definitely wanted by. Let's see if we can get a tow. get a draft down the straightaway. Hey, 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 this is qualifying, buddy. We're not even in the same class. I kind of messed up my turn. Final lap I can put in. Oh my goodness. 
How many times can I get stuck in traffic to get an awful qualifying lap? All right, so there are 16 P2 cars. I qualified 10th. Really, I should be up around probably 4th. Between 2nd and 5th, I'm going to say. Now, 3rd and 5th. Um, with my lap times that I normally run in qualifying. And again, I run race drum in qualifying because I found that the AI, the, the race for the AI, or with the AI, rather, seems to be a little more fun than kind of outpacing and then you kind of get this weird dichotomy between the race balance and the qualifying balance and I just thought it'd be better this way. It seems to work at least uh, in this case. Uh, 13 GTE cars and 8 GTC cars. Although, no, there's 14 GTE. We've got a guy that's way off the pace down here. Interesting. All right, now on to the garage real quick, uh, in case you wanted to look at my setup. Um, just changed a little bit in the power and the coast for the diff. Uh, I just happen to like a little more coast. I took a bunch of the power out, just because it seemed to be very unstable under throttle, uh, under acceleration. And then uh, in that right-hander, that high-speed right-hander, I also... Added just one click of downforce to the rear just to help the car stay planted a little better. Uh, didn't change anything in the suspension or the chassis, so we'll go to the advanced. Raised the PSI uh, two tenths here in the front. Makes the tires not quite so squishy, a little more responsive. Um, but I also tend to like to take out some camber. Uh, the interesting thing, and we'll get into this while we're dri uh, while I'm driving is all the cars are set up the same as far as the P2 cars are concerned. I have not tried the GT uh, cars yet. Uh, and there's some pretty interesting... I mean, you can read ad nauseum about it on the internet in the forums. There's some pretty interesting ideas. So let's get to the race. Hopefully I put enough fuel in the car. Half hours. Alright, had some problems. Had to do a restart. Had a... Big issue in turn one. Let's try this again. Now I tried NVIDIA Inspector and I was getting a pretty bad frame rate like I am now at the beginning. And I'm going to get swarmed by other cars here because I'm being too cautious, I can tell. Uh, I took the settings that I had off because I was afraid that I was... That's the reason that the frame rate was getting killed. Oh boy, this is not going to end well. Uh, but that does not appear to be my issue. So, just appears to be a lot going on on that front straightaway with all the cars. Well, at least we made it on the back straightaway in 10th where we started. So, going to see if we can grab 9th here. Again, that Liget, although it's a cool looking car, uh... I just did not, it was very, very nervous. I did not care for the way it handled. Get some laps in here and then we can start talking about how it drives. But right now I've got some concentration going on here. Let's see if we can go around the outside, maybe? Nope. I'm trying to be a little on the cautious side just because half hour race really don't want to do it over and it's easy to get yourself messed up in the beginning also I don't know if you can see it but I'm using a different set of pedals I'm using uh, some old phonetic CSR Elite pedals that I had sitting around this you know, it has the load cell in the brake I uh I broke my <laughs> I broke my Rickmotec pedals. I'm pretty sure it's my fault. I don't think it's you know a, a design flaw or anything. It's either that or a part failure. But again, I don't think it's a design flaw. I mean, it could be, but uh, I noticed I was getting some brake fade in the pedal itself, 
and uh, I could tell it was from the line getting air in it, so I went to bleed the brake again, and it has a reservoir that the fluid gets compressed into, and when I went to bleed it, uh, the plunger went all the way into the... how it looks in the instruction, the correct bleed procedure. Fluid shot out the back of the reservoir. <laughs> Uh, it's not supposed to do that. So, oops. That wasn't so good. So I kind of looked around and I had my T3PA Pros and I had these and I'm like, well, I just thought I'd give these a shot just because I haven't run these in a while. Being a little too conservative on that turn. But anyway, I just... Well, let me see the d difference between the pedals. I definitely like the ergonomics of the Rikmotec pedals better. I know I'm comparing two completely different levels of pedals here. I, I understand one's much higher end, but just for argument's sake, or comparison's sake, rather, I like the ergonomics of the GT1 Pro, or GT Pro 1's better. Um, the throttle and the clutch are much better, but the brake is... I'm kind of wavering on the brake. I initially liked the brake because it was very much like my sprint car. doesn't have a lot of travel, and it's what I was used to, but what I found was it became very hard to jump between sims and get the right level of nuance in your braking, which, as we all know, the braking is probably one of the hardest things to get right, and the most critical, in my opinion. As I'm losing time here. So, the brake pedal itself had a lot of slack in it, and a real, you know, my sprint car had slack in the pedal, but there's not a lot, and that's to prevent you from riding the brake, and of course the Fnatic does not have that slack in the pedal. So it's a very interesting change to go back and forth one from the Rickmotex to the CSRs, but what I found that's interesting, I almost, this is going to sound really bad, I almost like, once I got used to it, the phonetic load cell brake pedal in the CSR better because I feel like I've got more control. There was such a short throw and no matter what I changed with the Rickmotex set, it didn't seem to do a whole lot. Now, the Rickmotech does some really neat things. It has a little box that comes with it, and you can program curves of the brake and throttle response and, and all that. Um, but I don't know what it is. I feel like I've got a little bit better control with the pedals, as long as I shift when I'm supposed to, damn it. Need to definitely get on a better pace here. I'm running 144s, and that is not going to get it. Kind of hoping those guys... Start getting to lap traffic, which we will. We will get to lap traffic before it's all done, and then hopefully that'll kind of slow them down a little bit. Again, the setup I showed earlier is not going to get you the fastest lap ever, but it will make the car drivable. And then getting to the point of, is the Endurance Series mod... Uh, realistic. I, I kind of look at it from this point. I don't look a lot at the numbers or anything like that. What I do go off of is I've spent a lot of time sim racing. I've also spent a lot of time in a real world race car and in a few different ones actually. And so all I can do is draw off my experiences from that. And I think what we have to remember is when somebody is talking about how realistic something is, they're basing it off of their past experiences. So what we're really saying is, I should have shifted to fifth, and now I'm overdriving. What we're really saying is, based on my past experiences, this is what I consider to be realistic. Which is almost a terrible term to use, because there's no way to have every single physical thing in the real world as far as physics and everything uh, uh, physical pieces of a car 
the way the air moves. You can replicate it, but it is... I, I, I have yet to hear any definitive data as to whether something is actually true. I, I know these guys can get really, really close, and they can use all the numbers they want in the world, but... It's, uh... It's different. And so we get into this realistic. What is realistic? Now you can see the 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 light level really change in here. But what is realistic? Well, I don't know. When I look at the way the cars are set up, that does look a little suspect to me. Again, I've only done the P2 cars. I haven't tried any of the GT cars. But I will say, from driving them, I do notice that the P2 cars do drive differently. I'm going to try going underneath this guy. Stay there. So, that seems to lend to a little bit of the realism at least. But, as pointed out, when you people have started digging into the files, they notice that a lot of the files within car types share the same numbers. So, for somebody that's really into the numbers, then yes, I can understand how it's not realistic. They consider it more of a fantasy mod, Shift Billy. There we go, down to the 43.5, that's a little better. So, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I really enjoy running the car. I've only run it on this track. But I enjoy... I enjoy running this quite a bit. I, again, have not run any of the GTE or GTC cars. I have not tried their flat six mod yet. So that's, for me, that's kind of where I'm coming from, the basis of comparison. So now we're getting into back markers of the GTE field. So really it's a, you know, how invested are you in the numbers? If you're a person that is looking for the ultimate sim experience and are invested in the real world numbers, which I would argue that doesn't always translate to it being a realistic car to drive, but you are getting realistic, real world, rather, data. So if that's your thing, then I can understand how this mod can be a bit disappointing. I would still stress the fact that just because you can offer constructive criticism, but slamming the mod, I don't agree with. If you don't like it, it's free. You don't have to drive it. And I think they've done a good job. Is it the most realistic? Eh. Maybe, maybe not. Again, that's kind of a odd term to use. But do I enjoy driving it? Well, hell yes I do. At least the P2 cars, so... It is nice to have something like this to drive in R-Factor 2.